There we are. <laughs> okay, uh, so it, uh, thanks for this, this symposium. That has been very interesting and it has given us um, a lot of more, more uh, knowledge about our buildings by Asplund. And I will also uh, thank you, Luca, for this. Uh, I, can, uh, um, I, I can just agree in many points. And I will thank you especially for that you have so deeply studied this project because uh, it's not that uh, may before you have really given us a more knowledge and also this has been a unique uh, time to see them in this big I mean, all the wonderful pictures that you have, that we can see them in this very big scale. So, I have, uh, I have been working with the book on Asplund for a long time, and it started with uh, um, actually a competition in Stockholm for, uh, um, ad, uh, for the, the, uh, the library to be enlarged, and it was a catastrophic result of this competition in my view, and I was very angry about uh, the whole thing, because it was a too big program for the to, to do anything good about from this program. Uh, I will come back to that in, in the end. Uh, but uh, I, I'm an architectural historian and, and, and kind of uh, right, I have been also uh, working as an architectural critic and um, have been long ago uh, um, editor of the magazine Architecture. So, it has been a long life with, with the, this Swedish architecture, especially the, the period in the beginning uh, of the uh, 20th uh, century. Um, well, there has been many people, many persons have been written about Asplund and his projects are well known. So what could I add to this? Well, uh, I think I have been written two books um, on the early uh, 19th century and also a dissertation before, so I was uh, quite uh, familiar with this period in Swedish architecture. So uh, I thought that what I would, what I would like to do is to put Asperger in his, in his context of time. What was the situation for, this, for each project what was the commission? How did he think? How, what can his drawings uh, tell us about what he had in his mind and what he was uh, trying to do? And, uh, uh, so that has been uh, quite a thick volume that I hope will come in a year or so published. But there is still a lot to do about pictures. Um, but uh, uh, I will talk now, it, it could just be a glimpse of some projects. Um, I will, uh, uh, I have uh, four, uh, four projects. It's a Woodland Chapel, it's a courthouse in Solvesborg, it's a library and the observatory hill, and it's a Scandia cinema. And I will put some special aspects on it and it's, it's a building in its time. Uh, it's a building and its environment. It's the, ex, the um, exploitation, exploration of uh, light and space that is a theme in his, all his buildings, as Lola also told us. And it's a whole lot of details uh, too. So uh, uh, I will start with the uh, I've taken a, a winter um, uh, picture here, also to remind us that this is a, as a whole cemetery is just wonderful also in the winter, but in the pictures we always see it in the summer. But uh, 
now we are losing the winters because of the climate change, but it is a wonderful place also when it is snow on it. So the first is um, the, uh, the chapel, uh, and I said a peaceful place in the most turbulent of times, and that could be a headline of uh, his working with with this chapel. <coughs> and he, in to this illustration, he said himself, it was the wood itself that should dominate the impression. The chapel should be modestly subordinated to it. It should sneak into the wood. Pines and spruces should rise high over its roof. Um, so, uh, Asplund and Leverance had won the competition of the cemetery in 1915. They had uh, made some reworking of it, um, of the whole of it, and Asplund got the uh, commission to make the first chapel. And uh, uh, however, the commission, he, the first commission was to a larger chapel than this one. Uh, but this commission was changed because of the time. And the time was really, it was a time, urgent time uh, in many ways. It was wartime, it was the economy of uh, the local government was very pressed. Civil war was broken out in our neighboring country, Finland, as a consequence of the revolution of Russia. Where people were dying in Spanish flu uh, that was spreading well, very uh, fast in, uh, in the uh, miserable small flats that people were living in uh, with many children. Uh, so there was more, there was an urgent need for more graves, uh, for opening the cemetery for, for new graves. And to do that, it must be a, ca a chapel. So the commission as from uh, Gekner was a small uh, wooden chapel uh, sh that should be uh, in place uh, as possible, as, 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 as soon as possible. Um, and he designed the first pictures, uh, the first drawings in uh, 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 in 1918, November, when he got this new uh, commission. Uh, it was a small wooden house, standing alone in the vast wood at that time. Uh, but within uh, these limited conditions, Asplund's task was to create a building with dignity, designed for people in the most sad and painful moments of their lives, confronted with the ex existential questions of life and death. Uh, and these conditions, Asplund created a masterpiece and an icon in the history of architecture worldwide. Uh, the contrast between light and uh, dark, darkness, uh, are uh, in important ingredients in his uh, composition. The contra contrast between dark wood and the light columns between the, the uh, rusty, rustic uh, northern tradition uh, of the north and the white classic culture. Between national romanticism and new contemporary architectural ideals that what was leaning to a modern classicism, a process where Asplon himself was a leading figure. As plain and simple, the chapel may be. It contains rich associations to the world of architecture, from small temples in ancient times, as very old primitive houses in northern countries, as well as Danish golden age 
in the early 19th century. Uh, the old and the new was linked together to give the chapel a quality of being timeless. Approaching the building, you go um, sorry. You can see here the drawings uh, that uh, at first he, wa he was thinking of uh, getting uh, light into the chapel by a window on the right hand side in the chapel. Uh, uh, but uh, actually he uh, changed his mind, uh, he wanted more light, uh, so he changed it to a dome. And, uh, and and uh, 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 as from us, uh, as as, as uh, we heard before, also very uh, it was very important for him with light and and space in the room, and he made when he made the dome. Uh, he he, uh, he was uh, he, he was doing it that he thought with an effect that he wasn't satisfied with. He was critical to the result of of this uh, dome, and uh, that tells also a lot about his uh, how important it was with the absolutely right uh, conditions for to get the right light in the building. So he also, uh, he, 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 you can see from these windows when the, couple, uh, when the uh, dome comes in uh, and uh, <coughs> he, he said himself, uh, the dome should light light and softly rise above the low entrance hall, but have in reality got flatter character than the drawings promised, and not the unusual uh, exper experience, he said. So that tells us a lot of, of how very, very important it was just the, the right feeling of space. Well, we can. Uh, the details also is of course very important, and especially for this, especially for this uh, very small and humble building in the wood, it was important to give it a um, good, uh, very. Uh, um, well, these uh, gates that he uh, drew up uh, was made by a very clever uh, blacksmith in Sweden, and they were actually uh, very famous and uh, admired uh, objects of handicraft too. Uh, so this made a, a new quality to this small and humble building in the wood. Uh, he's always keen in details, as you will see also in this cinema. Uh, the portico, to, uh, to the, the little, the small chapel in the wood was standing there, and the wood was lost and there was nothing else at the time but he uh, made it uh, surrounded by wall and that was to make the uh, area of the chapel um, to get the scale that is uh, 
relevant to the little, to the small building, so that the building shouldn't uh, be perceived as as uh, strikingly small. But it, in the context of this smaller churchyard in the big wood, it got uh, another uh, the right scale. Uh, the portico is an uh, important uh, thing to uh, uh, that. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm losing my English words now and then uh, because it's uh, the, the passage where you get into the int more intimate. Um, character of this uh, smaller churchyard in the big cemetery. So Aspen was working very much with it to get it uh, make the symbolic passage here very clear and uh, also that you should see when you stand outside this portico, you see where you are going, what was waiting out there. And, Therefore, it, it uh, needed some very clear signs as the triangular black uh, roof and the white uh, columns that you can see in, in the, when, you, when you look into it. Uh, it was also important when you get, go out of the, of the a small churchyard, uh, because then you should meet the light after the very sad ceremony that you had been uh, on. Uh, so I'm quite convinced that Asplund has uh, scenographed this uh, uh, view that you see the light when you go out, and you can also go out uh, on the, on another way that uh, the children's light short, uh, graves, um, place for graves are opening. So that's a theme, you know, in the cemetery as a whole, that you go from the sad and the sorrow, and you, after that, you go out and you meet life again, and also light and hope. Um, so, to the next, um, I will say something about the uh, courthouse in Salvesborg. Uh, Salvesborg was a small town, uh, and now I see if I can get uh, <coughs> Uh, you can see here that it's, it's an old town, um, but have have been uh, 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 a little later new. Um, sorry, uh, I will go back before I do them. Uh, the courthouse should be situated at the um, end of a straight street from the uh, uh, from 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 the railway station at here. And up there, you, there was a street where the site of the house was there. So uh, already at the point of being at the railway station, you should see the courthouse. And it's quite <coughs> uh, But it was a small courthouse that he this commission was uh, for a small house that couldn't really be so <laughs> easy to get in, in the right first 
do. So he tries to rise the central part of it to get it to be a little higher. And uh, if, you, if we look at the first plan here, you see the courthouse and uh, the rooms beside it, which are, uh, it was demanded, it was demanded to have good connections between the uh, judge's place in the podium in the, uh, in the courtroom and the rooms on both sides, which were um, important for the process. Uh, so Asplund, to get light on this play, on the on the podium, he projected the these room uh, a bit out from the main volume volume to get a, a window at the uh, uh, to get a window to get light here. Um, but he was not really very satisfied with that. He wanted more light. Uh, and um, he had some problems with the room. It was too, he wanted more space here in this area. And the, this stair, flight of stair, the staircase, the staircase took too much space. So he was thinking about quite another plan. Another plan where he has so solved these problems. Uh, first, um, the it was a public building and it should be seen from a distance. So with this form, it uh, looks a little higher, a little, big, a little bigger. And it has also two very clear features, the clock and the uh, arch, which makes, uh, which is also possible to see uh, and grasp from a, from a distance. So you see the house, all already when you are at the station and he thought of making more light by a dome and at the same time uh, when, when he um, when he created the dome <coughs> he thought of a, of a rotunda a circular courtroom uh, and then he could, had the problem with the stairs that took too much space, so he got the idea of putting the, st the stairs on the outside of the courtroom. Um, and uh, thereby he solved some of his problems. And uh, he uh, also, uh, uh, there was to be two floors on, on the one, on the bottom floor, uh, there was the courtroom and all uh, the uh, localities that had to do with the process in the, in the courtroom. Uh, and on the uh, upper floor, there should be uh, uh, overnight rooms uh, for people that were going to uh, take part in the process. Uh, but uh, uh, here he illustrates how the people, persons here come and how they see the courthouse. Uh, in the first uh, instance, in the first uh, phases, he thought of two uh, entrances and the middle was only for getting light. Uh, but as uh, Luca uh, showed us, the, uh, uh, the work, workers' buildings 
for from Ukraine that Gazprom uh, had done before uh, that had uh, the same uh, podium with two doors, unlike also Villa Snellman, as you mentioned. But this was also changed here in the courthouse because he got a new commission uh, and uh, because the judge uh, apartment for him and his family should be included in the, in the building. So that meant that the house would be uh, higher. It would be three stories and all in the cellar, it was here. Uh, even four, um, yeah. where there were cells for the uh, um, people being uh, from, um, well, what's the term? <laughs> um, and uh, then he has come up with this new uh, drawings where he has uh, just uh, added uh, a stair on the other side. So he, uh, mm, he has uh, the one that comes up onto the bottom stage because it starts in the lower part of the building and you come up, you can come into the stairs here and there, uh, and uh, you come up to where the two uh, flights of stairs meets, uh, and to get uh, another story. He, wants, he, he needed uh, a third story, so he made two entrances uh, where uh, in the level of the uh, judge's uh, apartment and one of one and another uh, entrance went to a small um, part of the second store uh, second floor where there was a new stairs so it took him up also in the third floor it's a very complex um, layout, in fact. Uh, and the, then uh, uh, you see here the courtroom as it was uh, in uh, black and white pictures from the beginning. And uh, you, you can see these uh, balusters that are very special very strong in its form uh, that also we can see here in Scandia uh, and uh, the podium and, <coughs> and the seat of the judge in the, in the back side so which is the end of the street actually that he is his seat uh, but uh, It has happened this uh, a lot since the time. This is just uh, to, to see how the, uh, uh, the, uh, the upper floor with the rooms for organizing people comes up on the third floor. And this then. Uh, so, from these uh, uh, pictures in black and white from the time, it looks rather dark, especially inside. Uh, and uh, you can see here that there is no uh, windows on the, in the bottom <coughs> store. Uh, they are on the, on the sides. Uh, but afterwards, it has changed. It was there is window. There, there are windows now. Um, so there was a, be, a very uh, um, big change in the 1950s 
when the house was changed in many ways, especially, yeah, that's, this is just how it, you see it when you come closer to it today. Um, if, if you look at the, this picture, you see how this, the court room were looking. And this was made by the 1950s. Everything was gray. And the, te the textiles there is uh, for, for the uh, acoustics, <coughs> I think. There is uh, much of Asplon is, is gone. And uh, fortunately, this was the situation when Asplund in the 1980s was very famous. It was a kind of a renaissance for Asplund and Asplund's architecture. And at that time, they came out different publications and they showed this 1950s state of the uh, courtroom. But uh, now, 1920, uh, 2018, uh, the uh, uh, courthouse was renovated thanks to uh, then chief counselor chief in, in Salisbury, which was then, uh, couldn't stay there, but uh, she did a very, uh, and, uh, renovating people were doing a serious job. And actually the courthouse now, from that on, is, has gone back to what it was that we can get the right uh, view of how Asplund had thought it. And it is just uh, another, it's another room, it's another, uh, it has these contrasts, these uh, colors, uh, and uh, it's amazing, really. Uh, it is, of course, not easy to say exactly what every detail and every color, if how, how precisely it is uh, according to the uh, original, but it is uh, well done and it has given us the house back. Um, I have myself uh, for many years uh, made an article about my idea that uh, the castle of Penningby was, uh, had been an, an inspiration for us blood. Um, and I think so, even if I can't prove it. But um, uh, Penningby Castle is a medieval castle with its uh, towers. Uh, and uh, it's called, it is um, uh, rebuilt in the 18th, in the beginning of the 19th century uh, to a more, to this period that was actually a very strong inspiration also to um, Asplund's generation. Uh, so you can see, you can see my arguments here of some parts of it. Uh, the library was uh, started when Asplund got the pr uh, commission. He was the first uh, First, he got a uh, commission to make a plan for the observatory hill. Uh, and he didn't start uh, really working with the library um, until 1921, 2021. Uh, and uh, here is the first preliminary sketch, as he said himself. And what we can, uh, it is kind of, is an octagon, it is, and uh, it has some 
uh, like the, the um, uh, the Library of Congress in Washington DC that you can maybe think of. But what you can uh, notice here that he has exactly a uh, entrance hall with stairs that takes a lot of place. Uh, not uh, in fact, as you know, it changed to a rotunda. And uh, also the stairs, I mean, with the courthouse in Salmesboy, Aspen actually had solved the plan, the plan for the library. Uh, but it goes to another scale. And uh, the first uh, perspectives. <coughs> was like this, that you maybe also have seen. And uh, it should be a public building, and it should be uh, seen from the outside that this is a public building, and uh, the big columns here, with the horses, uh, were signs of public building, an important building, and that was needed. Uh, and uh, when it was published, this uh, proposal, uh, uh, critics were really very, um, uh, they were very happy about it. It was uh, very good, impressing, and so on. But there were some objections about these uh, columns. And uh, Asplund was uh, surely agreed with, with the problem, and he wasn't satisfied with them either, I think. Uh, but what to do? To take them away would leave the house very uh, naked, and uh, it should not be liked um, like this, supposedly. So he was also rethinking the uh, whole The, the way of uh, announcing a, a public building, uh, but making it not in this way, to put some, uh, some things on them, but by for, um, forming the, the volume. Um, I can't, uh, I have not time here to go deeper into it. I have to mention Uh, the uh, plan uh, as the overall plan for these uh, for the place uh, called at the time the Acropolis of Stockholm and it was the plans to exploit this hill very hard <coughs> uh, and Asplund had got the commission to make a plan for it and following this plan it really could have should have been a highly exploited place that would shape, change the whole city center uh, of Stockholm. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, these two versions here, but um, you can see here, this is the, bit of the library, it is the School of Economics, and this is another unidentified uh, public building, and then there are houses here, and then there are, on the top of the hill, it's a very big head, head building for the Stockholm University, the, the coming Stockholm University. And the uh, old uh, observatory here was uh, planned to be torn down. Uh, so, of course, there was a lot of uh, of criticism against this plan, uh, and especially from the uh, Bureau Chief um, uh, Advisory Board, <laughs> we'll call it, um, 
with, that were against this exploitation of this uh, place. Um, it was, at the time, it was looking like this. Uh, the corner you see here is uh, where the library now stands. Uh, and uh, this is Svea Wegen, and you have the uh, School of Economics there. Uh, and uh, this was not a very attractive, of course, uh, place uh, from this side. But on the other side, it was a, a park, and uh, the uh, uh, people criticized, criticizing this plan, um, they uh, said that the, this is a cultural, uh, this is a place of cultural heritage. It has been parked, it has been um, authors writing about it, and the observatory is there, and we have some history and it must be kept. The hill must be kept. So, <coughs> without uh, any um, of this very uh, high exploitation. So, and so, the decision was the city of Stockholm um, didn't, uh, they, they took away their um, plans for the exploitation. But the idea of having the uh, main building up on the top of the hill for the university, it was still in the plans. Uh, this is Oden, Odengatan, the same, um, just around the corner from, the, from what we saw on the, on, the, on the picture before. And you see here also the uh, commercial um, small um, so, uh, sales for vegetables, flowers, and so on. And uh, this was uh, this was uh, traditional on the place, and Asplund was very fond of it because he liked uh, the, the library to be a place surrounded by people coming, going every day. Uh, he was very, very keen on having a street life, not a monument uh, that should stand isolated, but it should be a part of the everyday life for citizens. So he liked this. Um, there was plans for a um, hall uh, commercial. Um, well, I, I come back to this. This is a plan, a new plan, then, after uh, the uh, change of uh, the uh, plans for the, for the hill. And now, in this uh, time, um, I, sorry. You see the this is the uh, uh, you see the library in the in the corner, and you see that uh, if it's planned for a, a small a pool where Asplund pointed out that it could be uh, for skating on in winters uh, and other uh, in the summer water and the trees and park. Um, and on the top of the hill, you see the big plan for the, the uh, coming, the planned uh, main building for the university. And also the uh, observatory. And to the right, you see the, you see four buildings where only three were realized, but uh, it was a plan that they are standing in the way to open the glimpses up from the street to the hill. Uh, so it was now <coughs> planned for a park on this uh, 
This is the situation when uh, the library is uh, finished and uh, also the School of Economics and uh, there is uh, an empty place for what was before a lot of old uh, wooden buildings in, uh, in uh, bad condition. But now the, is uh, to be realized a part uh, with a pool um, and uh, uh, as you see two of the buildings uh, the Lamel the buildings there by Lallestedt uh, is uh, also in place Uh, there was a proposal that maybe uh, uh, maybe to uh, build a hall of uh, uh, of uh, for selling uh, vegetables and so on, uh, like uh, Aspen had that that reminded of what what was before, and Aspen was very. Uh, he thought it was a very good idea, so he uh, made a proposal for how that could be. Uh, and then he was thinking about small, small shops um, that you could, when you go on the street, when you are going there, you could see the people coming and going, selling and he and buying and so on. Uh, but this was not realized. Um, instead, Asplund came up, came up with the idea of uh, making uh, um, this uh, kind of uh, selling um, in the way that it was built. <coughs> and uh, the hill it was a very important change here uh, from the plans from 1919 that Aspen made for the, uh, for the hill as a whole. And it was uh, like one of the famous from the time critics uh, said he was uh, associated to a, a university campus with the people sitting and reading and writing and so on. And uh, it was uh, something that it really was for a long time before the new university in, in Frascati was built. It worked like that because it is a kind of uh, many houses um, that with academic uh, um, work on. So, just a few buildings. Um, it was important for us that uh, two things. One uh, concerns the outside of the house and one concerns the inside of the house. And when it uh, comes to the outside, it uh, was a question of the um, library as a public building to have a kind of authority in the city but not to be an isolated, but a, a building uh, in, the street life, in the life of the citizens. Um, but it should announce that it is that kind of building. And how, what means could he use? Um, I, I said before, he was thinking of volumes uh, to get the these uh, kind of uh, rising, um, and he, as you know, it is a, the rotunda and the and the, um, the um, lower part of it. And Aspron said, uh, I have a quote here somewhere. Um, 
that, um, uh, well, I don't find it. <laughs> he, um, he had a discussion with the uh, commissioners, the government of Stockholm, um, on the costs of the building. And they were asking if it couldn't be cheaper or less expensive to make a quad, uh, quadrat uh, form uh, and not a rotunda, not a round one. And Aspen agreed very um, hard, was very um, decided on this. That, and he argued uh, to have the rotunda and he ar argued that no, it will not be more expensive. The, <coughs> the only thing that I have done that maybe not is absolutely necessary, that is that a question of the um, library as a public building to have a kind of authority in the city, but not to be an isolated but a, a building uh, in the street <coughs> life, in the life of the citizens, um, but it should announced that it is that kind of building. And how, what means could he use? Um, I, I said before, he was thinking of volumes uh, to get the, these uh, kind of uh, rising. Um, and he, as you know, it is the, the rotunda and the, and the the uh, lower part of it, and Asperin said, uh, I have a quote here somewhere. Um, um, that uh, uh, well, I don't find it. <laughs> he um, he had a discussion with the uh, commissioners, the government of Stockholm, um, on the costs of the building, and they were asking if it couldn't be cheaper or less expensive to make a quad uh, quadrat uh, form uh, and not a rotunda, not a round one. And Aspen agreed very um, hard, was very um, decided on this. That, and he argued uh, to have the rotunda, and he ar argued that no, it will not be more expensive. The, <coughs> the only thing that I have done that maybe not is absolutely necessary, that is that I have made the, the cylinder a little higher than is absolutely necessary. So he had raised the cylinder and that has the impact both from the outside and from the inside. From the outside it gives the uh, building uh, you know it <laughs> Uh, the, it, it will be seen from different points in the city, and that was important. Here uh, you're standing on a um, on a spot where you have uh, three buildings, uh, four, four, three buildings in the, uh, that you can see. It's Engelbrecht Church, it's Olof Fredrik Church, it's the library. And uh, from the Hall of Fred Church, imagine uh, you could also see the Stockholm, Post Stockholm Castle, as Johan Mortelius pointed out. So this is this is a building in the uh, environment, as Luca also pointed out. It's always, always for Aspen very important how it sets, how it relates to the environment and other buildings around it. Uh, 
and uh, it can be seen from different points. So, uh, my last uh, object will be this cinema that we are sitting in now. Um, and it is, uh, the, it is just, uh, it's 100 years from now, from, from then to now. Um, and uh, you have the uh, opportunity to examine it closer when we, uh, when we end this symposium. Uh, my book, uh, my dream is that my book may be a reminder to the Stockholm politicians to uh, realize what a jewel they have in this very, very special interior in this cinema. If it could be renovated totally to its original con uh, condition, it would really be a sensation, I'm convinced. It's a charming example of Asplund's play with urban references, with buildings in buildings, separate volumes, as well as scenographically, scenography of inside, inside, outside, where you feel that you are inside going out and outside going in and so on. And, uh, uh, we go from the foyer that feels like we are outside and we enter a new building that gives an outside feeling with a blue sky. Or we take the stairs and are on, in a small street coming up and get the feeling to be outside to enter a kind of a tent or an entertainment tent or something. So, um, after it has been renovated for several times, after Asper's death, it was re renovated in a way that could be rather called vandalizing, already in the 1940s. And after that, several times after hardware, but a more ambitious renovation was made actually by Klaus Reichmann, architecture, architect and an antiquarian office about seven, eight years ago. And they have made uh, some very important things. They have renovated these broderies uh, and uh, they have uh, added the uh, green color that you find in the foyers here, uh, that should uh, be a sign of being outside in the garden or in the green uh, when you enter the uh, auditorium. So, and the all the small niches, and Aspen had uh, many artists uh, working with him with these different things in, in the cinema. And <coughs> we have also Jonsson's uh, sta sculpture here is back, and uh, a lot of other things is uh, for the better. But to get back the uh, image of the wall, of the, of, the, of the sky up here above our heads, with the glittering stars of lights in different uh, places, uh, that was a perfect uh, illustration of being outside, sitting in the, under the sky, um, <coughs> and uh, taking part of what's going on here on the scene. Uh, so just a very few pictures of uh, of the cinema in. It's the imagination of Asplund, uh, the stir, uh, and you've seen before, um, and also 
special clothes that people had going around selling um, chocolates and so on. And this, as you saw before, the uh, selling uh, tickets uh, in a gl glazed uh, little uh, room. Uh, The details here, as in, uh, as always, by husband, it's taken care of very um, fine. Uh, and you can see them if you go upstairs. You see uh, these uh, at the beginning. Uh, and it's a uh, proposal that got uh, the first prize. And it is an overwhelmingly big building. Uh, and the, if we rem remember that what Aspen was actually most in, uh, afraid of, it was to get two high buildings close to the library because it should take away the uh, libraries uh, as a pub public building in the city with some <coughs> authority in, the, um, um, in, its, in its own environment. Uh, so uh, that made me very angry to see this because the program was too big and the uh, chances to get a good uh, the result of it was minimal, as I saw it. So I decided to write the book on Asplund, and that's that's how it was. So that's why I'm looking for still. <laughs> Thank you.